just want a little happiness. Come over to the Rangers. Come enjoy our our hockey team a little bit, man. We're in first place. We've got the leading scorer in the league. As Al Goal says, scorer. playoff time, you'll, we'll, you'll yeah, catch you, us you there. Yeah, you just come on over, man. It's playoff fun, time, you'll man. catch us there. I know. I know. You we'll just want to be, be this whole negativi- no, negativity it's thing. No, it's not negativity. It's realism is I know what that. it is. It's I know realistic. That. All right. And, and, I, and I just I feel like these this, this happens with quarterbacks come draft time, and it happens with coaches now. Is that this mo- this positive momentum, because everybody is so starved for positivity, starts to roll, and then nobody stops it. And, the, and you know, the Joe Judge thing came out of nowhere, so it's not like we had time to even really process that. But you get these quarterbacks in the draft, they're like, oh, look at this guy, look at that guy, look at the combine, look at the pro day, and then all of a sudden he gets drafted in the top ten and he blows. And I think that's what's happening here with Brian Dayball, especially since the guy who is the general manager who is in charge of this search now, Shane, who came from Buffalo, everybody's like, well, it's Dayball, and then look at what the Bills offense did against the Patriots, and then what they did against the Chiefs, even in a loss. This guy has to be the head coach. And I'm just, like, if you look back, so nobody ever thought about Brian Dable as a head coach. when Until he, was, he got to Buffalo. Right. And when he was in Cleveland right. as the offensive coordinator mm-hmm. back in 2009 and 2010, you want to know why? Because his why. quarterbacks were Brady Quinn and Derek Anderson. And then nobody thought of Brian Dayball after he left there and then went to Miami as a head coach when he was an offensive coordinator. Wasn't the hot coordinator then. You want to know why? Why? Because his quarterbacks were Chad Henney and Matt Moore. Okay. And then after he left there, because everybody gets fired everywhere yes. from coaching staffs, then he goes to Kansas City as what? an offensive coordinator. Man, what happened there? Well, he got fired as a part of the Romeo Cornell Todd Haley staff. Oh, wow. And then he had Matt Castle as the coordinator quarterback there and that team was two and 14 and then guess who came in to be the coach in 2013 after that 2012 season or Brian Dayball. Andy Reid Andy Reid and guess who didn't keep Brian Dayball Andy Reid Andy Reid so if Brian Dayball was such a genius don't you think one of the best head coaches in the history of the league would have said we got to keep him on the staff and what this is young up and coming whippersnapper of an offensive coordinator now all of a sudden Brian Dayball is king bleep because he's got Josh Allen so now we know this guy could be a head coach? Stop. It's just it's so much more. Like this is this is the, the hot coordinator thing doesn't always work. And it fails more often than not. And then you forget about some of these guys who have experience doing it because you get wrapped up in what just happened in front of your face. The Bills offense is great because of Josh Allen. That's why. And Josh Allen can tell you that he loves Brian Dable. I will guarantee you if Brian Dable leaves the Buffalo Bills. And it sounds like he will, and he's going to be a head coach next year. That Josh Allen next year, he's still going to be great. And he's going to be a top three MVP candidate going into the year. Nobody's going to think that Josh Allen's going to be castrated because Brian Dayball left. Whoever is the next guy is going to be jumping in that booth faster than they've ever moved in their life because then they'll be the next one ascending because they're going to be riding the back of Josh Allen. What? No, nothing. I'm just. I'm sitting here and just. I'm. I'm I very... mean, do you agree or not agree? Well, well, uh, I, I, you caught me off guard. We're five minutes into the show and you're screaming and yelling. Well, and I, it's a, it's a good thing. I, I saw mean, a headline: I can... the Giants must hire Brian Davis. So you're reacting to what somebody else's point of view is. Yeah, and I think it, I I don't agree. Mu- I, a, mu- a must hire. A must hire is if Sean Payton left that would be a must North, hire. New Orleans, which he may, and didn't take a, a year off and then decided that he wanted to, to coach somewhere else. That's a must hire. Well, Sean Payton's got three years left on his contract. Yeah. And if he leaves, he's most likely leaving to go to TV, it sounds like. And I would think that he owes Gail Benson like at least like some clarity about what he's going to do. I mean, the, the, the longer this goes on, the less likely they are to be able to get the coach that maybe they want. I don't know. But, all right, so back to your Brian Dayball thing. So I've told you here a thousand times, what kind of coach do I want? I want a coach that has energy. I want a coach that can stand in front of an entire team and inspire his team. And I want a coach who can handle situational football when it arises in the middle of the highest level of anxiety that the, that, the, that we just saw this past weekend. You know, I want a Mike Vrabel type. I want a Zach Taylor type. I want a Sean McVay type. 
You know, those are the guys I want. Old school guys like, you know, the Bruce Arians of the world and the Brian Dables of the world. They work well with veterans. They work well with guys that, you know, you can trust. They work well with guys like Tom Brady because you know why? They know Tom Brady is going to be the professional that he is, and he's going to put every ounce of his body and being into his job, and he's going to be somebody that the coach doesn't have to worry about, and he's going to raise the level of everybody's game. Now, the Giants don't have that player. They just don't. And if they think that Brian Dable is going to come in here and turn Daniel Jones into Josh Allen, I I got another thing coming for you. It's it's not happening. Yeah, that's another part same. of this argument. He's not that's the same type of player. And mind again, numbing. So again, I, I do think that they like Daniel Jones. I do think that. And I think that they're thinking, if I were over there, that the most important thing that I can do is get a guy that has had some success with one of the top quarterbacks in the league. And maybe that's why Brian Dable would be on top of the list of at least candidates to interview. Yes, 100%. I get all that. But that doesn't mean necessarily he's the guy that I'm hiring because I have to get to know this guy. I got to, I got to, I got to see him. I got to see does he have energy? Does he bring it every day? You know, an NFL head coach can't have a bad day. He's got to be above all the crap below him, and he's the guy that's got to lead the men in that locker room, and he's the guy that's got to make all the right decisions on Sunday so the team doesn't lose credibility in him. Yeah, of course, and I I don't know that about him. I don't and, I, I don't and, know that and, about him either. And, and sitting down and talking to him, and those are things that, for sure. I mean, I you've seen guys walk into interviews who are relatively unknown, and it go both ways. For example, Mike Tomlin, he was a one year defensive coordinator with the Minnesota Vikings. He walked into the Steelers facility, and he got that job, and he's been on a run, and he's won a Super Bowl. And who is who is his quarterback? Well, Ben Roethlisberger, right. of course. So That's another one. And to definitely, and he's going to go through. I mean, unless Aaron Rodgers jumps to the Pittsburgh Steelers, he's going to be going through quarterback hell now too. You know, and they, you know Ben missed a year last year. He still didn't most of the year with his injury. He still didn't have a losing season. So there is there is that. You know, Ben did miss those first four games and went three and one in that year that he was suspended. So there's yep. a couple of things in there with Mike Tomlin where you say the guy the guy can coach. Um, and even in, or the guy could stand up in front of a team right. and keep the team together. And, you know, calm everybody down and deal with all the nonsense and maybe look the other way when it comes to a few things off the field when it comes to Antonio Brown, LeGarrette Blount, uh, Le'Veon oh, yeah. Bell, right. whatever. You know, whatever that all that nonsense may be, for some reason he's able to kind of just manage it. The way that, uh, that I always thought that Marvin Lewis was able to man- manage it in Cincinnati, and that was prior to when the, uh, the NFL took over all the – you know, punishment aspect of everything and took the coaches out of it because the coaches were put in really difficult situations depending on what city they were coaching in. So, um, you know, look, I, it's a guy. He's another guy. Uh, Shane knows him really well. You know, this is a big thing for Shane too. You know, don't, don't forget. I mean, most general managers, uh, especially new ones that are coming in from a place like, uh, you know, like Buffalo where they hired Sean McDermott as a head coach. Mm-hmm. He was a coordinator. You remember, he, you know, he was fired by Andy Reid, too, by the way. He fired by Andy Reid? Yeah, in Philadelphia. Okay. And, then, and then went to Carolina. Sure. And then, of course, Bean knew him in Carolina, knew how probably structured he was and how organized he was and how energetic he is. And you see how energetic he is. But I will say this, in the biggest moment of Sean McDermott's career. They blew it. They had 13 seconds to... Get rid of somehow. Mm -hmm. That is situational football. That is a situation within the body of a game, and they did the wrong thing. Three different different ways. And remember, he's a defensive guy along with Leslie Frazier. They're both defensive guys. And so they kick it off into the end zone, Mm -hmm. give Patrick Mahomes the ball in the 25, which we talked about endlessly yesterday. And the more I look at it, the more I'm I'm sitting here saying to myself, hey – these guys are a head, the head coach's defense, Leslie Frazier's defense. Uh, they kick it off, and they allow the uh, Chiefs to go 44 yards in two plays. I, I, that's mind-bogglingly, like, stupid. Yeah, I mean, I think you were right yesterday in the fact that they didn't think that it was possible, and they were dead wrong about it. I mean, they, they played that situation like they, they didn't think that 13 seconds was enough, and clearly it was enough. Well, look who you're playing against. Look at that. And... and it was it was uh, Tyree Kill, 
And it was Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I mean, the two guys that you can't lose in those spots is the two guys that got those chunks of yardage. Because they're playing soft zone defense and rushing four for what? The rush could not get there. See, the problem with the uh, it, going back and looking at that game, the pass rush, as the game got on, the pass rush got worse for both teams. Mm-hmm. Just worse. It just got worse. The, those guys got so tired. And I, and I think of Mario Addison and I think of Jerry Hughes on the Buffalo Bills defensive line. Those guys were busting their ass the whole game, and they came so close to getting Patrick Mahomes once, twice, three, four, five times, and they could never get him. And they were running after him and going 100 miles an hour, and they just ran out of gas. But I, uh, I'm, I'm with you to a certain extent. I, I think we need to pump the brakes. Well, that's the on thing. It's this. this momentum that's building towards Brian Dable as if he is the only guy. That can solve the Giants' problems. Now, you want to tell me you go through the whole process and Brian Dable ends up being the best candidate and they end up hiring him because they believe in him? That's one thing. But, I mean, this reaction is if you know everybody just can't wait to pluck Brian Dable out of Buffalo and stick him here as a head coach of the Giants just doesn't make any sense to me. And why is it that you know when, when everybody gets up in a lather about some of these guys, they never bring up the, the negative parts of their career? I mean, has have you heard anybody talk about him in Cleveland, Miami, or Kansas City? Nobody ever says that. It's just, oh, it's look what he's done in Buffalo, and he played for. Be- I mean, he coached for Belichick, and he coached for Saban. He's also failed massively when he hasn't had any quarterbacks. And by the way, guess what? The Giants don't have a quarterback, in my opinion. So he'd probably come in here and have the same type of struggles. I- and the, and then when a team is in this state of just complete disarray. I, don't you want somebody who's had the job before? I mean, I said this about the Jets as well last year, and they ended up going with Rob Sala, and we were fine with Rob Sala because he had all those things you talked about, the energy standing in front of a room, being able to talk to the players and those things, and, and hopefully he works out. But I, but the, the idea of this, the unknown is better than the guy who's done it before because the first time around the guy failed as a head coach, I don't necessarily think that that is always the way to go. Well, there are guys out there, you you know, other coordinators like a Nathaniel Hackett from Green Bay and a Kevin O'Connell from, uh, I believe, the Rams. You know, these are young guys that are like cut from the Sean McVay tree, the Jay Gruden tree, you know, the, the Shanahan tree, you know, that group of guys. Uh, you know, then you have this second group of guys, the Dayballs, the Frasers, um, you know, the Todd Bowles. You know, those types of guys that have been around the league a long time, understand how to talk to players. Uh, but they're n- none of them are going to be any good unless we all can see it. They have the quarterback that's going to make the whole thing go. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, there's about eight of there are about eight of these quarterbacks. You know, and Ryan Tannehill is like at the bottom of that group. Mm-hmm. But Ryan Tannehill is competent enough, along with a good team around him, to get their team into the playoffs. But when you get to the upper echelon of the playoffs and you got to play Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City, good luck with that. Well, I mean, Josh Allen went toe to toe with him. He did. He and, did. And I know. But then, but then, think forward now. Mm-hmm. So in the AFC, you're going to have Burrow, Herbert, Mahomes, Josh Allen. Uh, you know, Lamar Jackson if he comes back and he's healthy and he can play the way that he can play. I mean, think about that. That this is going to be a gauntlet for the next six to fifteen years <laughs> with these young kids that are redefining the way to play the position. Yeah, th- th- those guys are going to get lots of dudes' jobs. That's what happens. Yeah, that's, that's those, exactly These what quarterbacks get guys' jobs. I told you, man, uh, Brett Favre got, I think, like six guys' head coaching jobs off of that staff yeah. in Green Bay. Yep, absolutely. It just, it just happens, and that's, that's the way it works. If you got a great quarterback and he's putting up great numbers and you're consistently winning, look at all the guys that have come from New England. Now I'm not. They haven't been all successful. Most of them have not been, yeah. right? But the you know, be, well again because they know the way it should be done internally. Now trying to bring that internally to dysfunctional franchises is almost impossible. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.